Hello, and welcome to another short screencast. Um, this one actually piggybacks off of a previous one that I did about magnetic induction around a solenoid. So if you haven't seen that one yet, I, I might advise it. It's not that long. And uh, I'm going to kind of carry on from where I left off on that one to show you one of the more curious uh, phenomena that we um, get introduced to in this unit. And that is how we can create an electric field in a way that we've never even thought of. Electric fields previously have always been those fields associated with positive or negative charges sitting somewhere, or maybe there were multiple ones. So we had the simplest uh, electric field radiating away from or towards a positive or negative charge, or maybe we had a, a electric dipole or a long line of charge, a, sheet, a disk, a ring of charge. We've got all these different equations to describe how strong the field is at different locations around them. But they all had the similar properties that they started on a positive charge and they ended on a negative charge. And so we're going to find here these induced electric fields have the same sort of uh, function. They can move or exert a force on an electric charge but they have a very, very different characteristic from the static charges field. So let's take a look at how we induce an electric field and then what makes them different from the static charge fields. Here's a brief summary of what that previous video described, and that is if we put a ring of wire, like copper wire shown here in yellow, around a solenoid, or we could even do one inside a solenoid, that we can create current inside that ring or th around that ring by changing the current in the solenoid. Now just to be sure here, there is no connection electrically between those two. There's a big gap of air. We just use a galvanometer to, uh, to measure how much current we get. And we find that we only get current flowing through that wire loop when we have current changing in the solenoid. That's usually when you turn the solenoid on or when you turn it off or maybe you're, you're hooked up to a power supply and you're just adjusting it. So anytime that that current is changing, you're going to generate current in the ring. But then when the solenoid has a steady current, there's nothing in the ring. And that is the property known as magnetic induction. It's governed by Faraday's law, which says if you change the magnetic flux through some area, that you can create a current around um, a loop defined by that area. So now let's look at what happens if we take away that ring of wire. Something very curious. So here's the solenoid again, but notice that the copper wire ring around it is missing. We still have the changing current in the solenoid. This is a case where the changing current is in the same direction as the current itself which means that the current is increasing. When they're in opposite directions, that means that the current is decreasing. So when we look at this from a different perspective, there's the current running around the solenoid's wires. We don't really see the wires from this perspective. It's got current counterclockwise. That's creating an inward field. That's marked with the B. And then I've got a little spot here that I'm going to mark with a dot. I'll call that point P and it's a distance r away from the center of the solenoid. Well, here's the curious thing I mentioned. Even if we don't have a piece of metal there with a galvanometer we can hook up to it, let's imagine we take a test charge over there. And so that test charge is going to give us the ability to feel the presence of an electric field. It turns out we do indeed sense an electric field as we are increasing the current in the wire. And the direction of that field is rightward at that location. So if that piques your curiosity, you say, well, wait a minute, I, I know we've got current. We certainly have charges everywhere. Why would we have a rightward electric field? You might go looking around for some positive charges maybe over here on the left. Of course, there aren't any. Maybe there's some negative charges on the right or something. No, there aren't any. All we have around here is this solenoid. So you, if you get curious enough, you might take your test charge over here to the right a little bit. 
And if you're careful and put it at the same distance away from the center as you were before, you will find an upward electric field there. So your positive test charge would feel a push upward. And if you go up here, the same distance above the solenoid, you're going to see and feel a leftward field. And then you can just imagine how this picture is going to end. A downward electric field over here on the left. Furthermore, when you do careful measurements, you see that the electric field is equal at all those locations. Equal in magnitude, equal strength. Well, if you probe around a little further, maybe you go out here somewhere, out to the right, twice as far away as you were before. Actually, let's move that a little further out. Well, that's not going to cooperate, so we'll just put another little dot out here. When we're twice as far away, we see a field out there, and we feel a field that is half as strong. Same up here and out here. They sh still have the same directions, but they just don't have the same strength. And we could find an array of electric fields all around here. So I might go somewhere in between, like over here, same distance away as my first points, and that's a terrible arrow, but that would be up and to the left, and over here, down and to the left, and over here, down and to the right, and over here, up and to the right. So how do we complete this picture? Well, I'm going to do the best I can freehanding this. It turns out we have a circularly shaped electric field. And that is something that is completely absurd because we've never seen electric fields that close on themselves. They've always started at one location and ended at another. But these induced electric fields are much more like magnetic fields in that they just don't start or stop anywhere. They are completely closed paths. This one's circular. And their strength is stronger when you're closer to what is causing the field in the first place. That would be the changing current in the solenoid. So let's look at just how strong it is, how we describe that with a slightly different version of Faraday's law. So let's write Faraday's law here. It says that the EMF gener generated by a changing magnetic flux is equal to the rate of change of that flux. Remember, flux is the field times the area. So one of those things has to be changing. In the case of a solenoid where we're changing the current, it's not the area, it's the field that's going to change. So when we take out all of the things from the derivative that aren't going to be changing for a solenoid, that would include mu naught, the turns per length, little n, the area, that would be the circular region that we showed in that last figure. All that comes out, and we're left with just one changing value, and that's the current. So we'll put the di dt in there. That's just the rate at which you're like turning the knob on your power supply. We took the negative sign out of there, because remember, the lenses law operation is kind of a separate part. This is just a magnitude. So Faraday figured out that, well, if we don't have piece of metal around there for this EMF to actually push some current, then we obviously can't put a galvanometer on it. So how are we going to describe this electric field? Well, we're just going to modify the left side of this equation and write that EMF. This is actually a form we've seen before. The closed integral of E dot ds. So that will take the place of the EMF expression. Nothing over here has to change in the case of a solenoid, so I'll just rewrite that part. So what do we do when we actually want to know how strong the electric field is? Remember what we saw on that previous slide was the electric field seemed to be getting weaker as we went farther and farther from our solenoid. That's exactly what this shows, because the left side of this is just like what we did with Ampere's law when we were describing how strong a magnetic field is due to a current. We would imagine a path around that current, and we would walk around that path, and we would multiply the strength of the field times the little step along the path that we took. we dot them together, and we would sum them all up, and that gave us a nice expression. Well, 
because the electric field is the same at every distance uh, r away from the center of that solenoid, that means E isn't really going to be different. Our little steps could be the same length. And so this simplifies on the left side to just E times the total path length, which is the circumference of that circle that we would be making, 2 pi r. And again, nothing over here is changing. I'm kind of done with the right side. And I have just one more thing to do. And that is to solve for e by dividing by 2 pi r. So we get mu naught little n a di dt all divided by 2 pi r. Now that's a handful there, but I want to point out what it says. It says that the electric field generated is due to the changing current in the solenoid, but the field is not the same everywhere. It's inversely proportional to how far you are from the center of that solenoid. And everything else on there you see is a constant, just a parameter in the problem. So this is kind of the new version, or a different version, for Faraday's Law that describes not just the EMF, but the field that is um, really what that EMF is uh, measuring. So um, we're going to restrict our discussions in this class to, to nice symmetrical situations like this. So you will always have circular regions of magnetic field. Um, we're not going to put a square solenoid in front of you because it would still generate a field, but it would be almost impossible for us to calculate with the math abilities that we have. So we'll stick with these, and if you can handle that, then uh, you'll be in great shape. So I hope you found this somewhat curious, that we've got a new kind of electric field here to consider, and, um, and I'll just add that there's more to come here. This, this electric field, magnetic field connection is going to take an interesting twist. I'm going to leave you hanging on that one.